Hey guys, I'm going to be telling you about the principle of moment and moments. Uh, it's the third time that I'm doing this video today because I have been interrupted twice already. So let's get cracking before someone else comes in. So moment, by definition, moment is uh, force times the distance, okay? But this is not just any distance, it's going to be the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot. The pivot, by definition, is going to be the place right here, look here in these two pictures, the place where I'm going to have this turning effect, because the moment is really a measure of the turning effect of a force. So I'm not pushing or pulling, I am making that somehow something turns around at an angle, okay? So something goes around something, which that something is a pivot, okay? So, because moment is force times distance, and force is in newtons and distance in meters, the moment by definition is newton meters, okay? So... I can use moments in everyday life. Uh, think about the door handles. They are pl pl uh, placed away from the hinge because I would have to make more effort if I would try to open a door, and you can give it a go and try to open a door. Uh, I would have to make more effort trying to opening a door if I would be close to the pivot, so the hinge, than if I would be further away. Because the bigger the distance that I have, then for the same force, the bigger the moment, so the bigger the turning effect. So this is why when I want to turn something, I should do it from the highest distance, perpendicular distance as possible. The same reason why if I would have to choose in between a long-handed spanner and a short one, I would go for the long one. Because again, the distance from the pivot would be increased, therefore, the, for the same moment, for the same turning effect, my force, my effort would not have to be as big, okay? Now, the moment of a force is a measure of the turning effect of the force on an object, okay? And I can increase it two ways, increasing the force, because moment is force times distance, or increasing the distance from the pivot. And again, the pivot is a point about which an object turns when acted by that force, okay? Now, I can have moments that are clockwise and anti-clockwise, okay? And just think about the clock. If when I'm making my turning effect, this is going in the same direction as the pointers in a clock, I have a clockwise moment. Many times they say positive, you just need to stick to whatever your definition of positive or negative is, okay? Now, on the other hand, if I have a moment that is making me turn against the pointers in a clock, against the movement of the pointers in a clock, I have an anti-clockwise moment, which again, normally is put as negative, but it is up to you as long as whichever definition you decide to make is the one that you stick to, okay? So... Here I would have a clockwise moment of 6, the distance, times 50, the force. And on this side I would have an anti-clockwise moment of 4, the distance from the pivot, times 80, the force applied to it, okay? So either if it's anti-clockwise moment or clockwise moment, I still use the same formulas. The force, in this case, is here represented as a W because it would be the weight of these objects that I have here, times the distance, okay? Now, I can reach equilibrium if my clockwise moment and my anti-clockwise moment are the same value. So if the sum of my anti-clockwise moment is equal to the sum of my uh, clockwise moment, my object is balanced, so is at equilibrium, okay? So here it is, if my W1 times the distance 1 is equal to my W2, here it is, my second force, times the second distance, so the distance from the second force to the pivot, then my ruler, in this case, is at equilibrium, okay? This particular picture is not mine, I took it from the internet. So, by definition, if the anti-clockwise moment and the clockwise moment are equal, then the seesaw or the ruler, because they are putting here two things, is balanced. And this is known as the principle of moments. Now, I can use the principle of moments in to support problems. These are a little bit more difficult, as you can see right now looking at this slide, okay? Now, if the center of mass, and you have a video about center of mass, so go and check something that is, well, it has in the title center of mass. 
if my center of mass of my bridge or for example here the beam is midway between the two pillars I have the pillar X and the pillar Y and then perpendicular to the pillars I have the beam then the weight of the beam is shared equally between the two pillars no problems okay so the support on each beam is going to be equal to the half of the weight of the beam so that's fine that would be easy however we need to be prepared for an exercise where this does not happen okay so in here I have the center of mass not in the middle and I'm representing uh, assuming that all force is uh, concentrated onto this point I'm representing it here I have the support force of uh, pillar X going up I have the support force of pillar Y going up and I have the two perpendicular distances from the forces to the pivot the place where I could have my beam to break and turn okay uh, the distance y and the distance x okay so when x is in contact with the beam right here then s y d equals w d x s y is the support in y d is the distance in between the pillars so this force times this whole distance is equal to that force times that distance okay this is me just applying the principle of moments force times distance equals force times distance okay and now I'm resolving it for the support in Y so SY equals the weight times the distance in X DX divided by the distance in between the pillars at the same way I can figure out what the support in X must, must be so when Y is in contact with the beam here I have Y then S X times the distance so this force times that distance okay needs to be equal to this force that is trying to make it go down times that distance okay dy that means that dx is the weight times dy divided by big d which is the distance in between the two pillars okay so if the center of mass is closer to x like in this problem then the distance in x is smaller than the distance in y obviously right so that means that the support in y is smaller than the support in x so because the center of mass is closer to x then it means that x is doing the biggest effort really okay so that's one example of how we can do this I think yeah this is all just exercises so we can leave them for now because this is just me explaining I hope it made sense um, again all this you can always take note by pausing the video and then checking what happens after and um, yeah uh, see it again if you didn't understand something or send me a message something of of the above options okay so take care and i'm going to go now before i'm interrupted again so see you take care bye